All right, we're into Unit 8. Unit 8 deals with rational functions. Another new function that you've never dealt with before and one that we're going to practice and learn how to solve uh, equations that in involving the situation. Now, what is a rational function? First of all, a rational function is A, a quotient of two polynomials. Now, we studied polynomials back in Unit 5 or 6, and we dealt with those back then. But now, we're going to talk about quotient. We all know what the word quotient means divide. So we're going to be dealing with a lot of division problems in this particular unit. B, a rational function usually has the variable x in the denominator. And that's what makes this particular situation unique, which you're going to see here in a little bit. x being in the denominator causes us some difficulties, which we will discuss in the next couple videos. Now, some examples of rational functions. For instance, x squared minus 4 over x plus 2. That would be a rational function or expression. It's got x in the denominator. Or 10 divided by x squared minus 16. Or x plus 3 divided by x minus 7. Those are all examples of what a rational function is because x is in the denominator. Now, let's talk about some rules that I want you to follow when you deal with rational functions. This will make your life easier and keep you from making mistakes. First of all, rule number one, anything that is added or subtracted from a variable needs to be in parentheses. Please follow that rule. Rule number two. Always identify and list values for x that cause the variable or cause the uh, values of x that cause the denominator, oops, spelling issues, denominator to be equal to zero. The reason this is bad is because if the denominator equals zero, the function is undefined undefined you can't have that that's bad and that's what causes us problems so for instance let's follow those two rules with my examples that I had on the prior screen the first example I had was x squared minus 4 divided by x plus 2 now in the, in the numerator, there is a minus sign. You're going to minus 4 from the variable. This should be in parentheses. In the denominator, there's a plus sign. That should also be in parentheses. Please do that for reasons I'll discuss on the next video. Rule number two, identify values for x that cause the denominator to be 0 because you all know we cannot divide by 0. Dividing by 0 is bad. Bad. You cannot divide by 0. So therefore, we need to figure out what number x can be to make that denominator 0. Well, obviously, I hope you all know x is negative 2 is going to be a Bad value for this particular problem. Bad, bad, bad. This is no good. You cannot use negative 2 for x. Second problem. 
from the prior screen. We had 10 divided by x squared minus 16. Well, the numerator is okay. There's no plus or minus signs and no variable, but the bottom has a minus sign. Put it in parentheses. Now, what values cause this to be bad? Well, I would take x squared minus 16 and make it equal to 0 and find that out. Well, that's easy because you all know x squared equals 16. And then when I take the square root of both sides, x equals 4 or negative 4. Oops. Another error. Negative 4. We cannot have x be either of those two answers. X cannot be either of those because that makes the denominator zero. That is bad, bad, bad. Can't do that. And finally, X plus 3 divided by X minus 7. That was our other problem from the earlier slide. Well, obviously, there's a plus sign in the numerator and a minus sign in the denominator. They should both be in parentheses. And rule number two what is the value that causes the denominator to be 0? Well, x minus 7 equals 0 if I solve it. x cannot be 7. That is bad. Bad number. You can't use 7 in that problem. So you're going to do this all unit long. Get used to listing the values for x that are bad. You can't do them. You can't use them. Last slide. Let's talk about simplifying some rational expressions. This is kind of like, in other words, when you see this direction, this is like the word reduce. So for instance, if I had 9 twelfths, you all know that 9 is 3 times 3 and 12 is 3 times 4. And what you do is you cancel out on top the thing that's the same on the bottom. There's a 3 on top and a 3 on bottom. Therefore, when I reduce this, I get 3 fourths. The same is going to hold true this unit. You reduce, reduce, and cancel things that are exactly the same in the numerator and denominator. Oops. I'm having trouble spelling here. All right. So, for instance, let's say I have 3x to the 7th divided by 18x to the 4th. Now, you sure can list these things and write all this stuff out. That would be 3 times x times x times x times x times x times x times x. X to the 7th divided by 3 times 3 times 2 times x times x times x times x. And then you're going to reduce and cancel all the things that are exactly the same. I got a 3 on top, 3 on bottom. I got an x on top, an x on bottom. And I can cancel these out, and these two out, and these two out. And what's left is my answer, which would be x to the third on top divided by 6 on the bottom, 3 times 2. Now, if you don't want to do the step in the green box... Well, reduce the numbers. 3 18 is 1 6 And then you minus the powers. x to the 7th minus x to the 4th is x to the 3rd, which is there are more x's on top than there are on the bottom, and I get the same answer. You sure can do it either way. And that's the basics for rational expressions and the, what the idea is for this unit.